All right. Thank you for that. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Any of you ever gone rock climbing like that? Good. <laughs> Kirk? <laughs> I did just a little bit, but uh, um, the only little bit I did, uh, I just remember the word clinging, which is our title today, clinging to Jesus. Well, uh, I've always been kind of wide body, flat foot, and I don't cling very well to rock. So uh, luckily, uh, I went with my friend Pastor Munner in the South, uh, South Dakota, in Harney Peak, and luckily we were on belay with a rope and everything. So when I fell, I remember seeing all of Wyoming out there, which seemed like it. But anyway, if, if we could cling to our Lord like a rock climber clings to, uh, to the rock when he or she is going up those sheer cliffs, that, that might be a good analogy for us. Um, here's a little starter here. It's Colossians 2, verse 3. Just I love this verse. In Christ are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Very simple. In Christ are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's Colossians 2, verse 3. We're going to talk today about when we come to Christ, it's just the beginning. Now, the one thing when I'm you know, speaking with you and folks online, many of whom I don't know, I don't know where any of you are in terms of your journey of faith. There may be some at zero or even below zero and others who have been slowly growing all your life. But we're going to talk a little about that today. But just a quick update. We started out, remember, uh, saved from shallow religion. Shallow religion meaning, um, well, I think we know that. Just, just kind of surface stuff, not really in depth. And then, and then next we talked about being rewired, much like an electrician would re rewire your house or a combine or a car or whatever. And then we talked about being born anew, which is a big concept. Uh, we, our life's maybe been down the dumps and we're born anew in Jesus. And last week, set from, being set from shame. And if you remember, it was the woman at the well who later became like a saint and brought her sons and siblings and others to Christ and, laid, and later died as a martyr. So today we're going to talk about clinging to Jesus. So, Patty, thanks for that. That's a long gospel reading there. And uh, in, in the notes I had, they had all that. But it's, it's another long story. Like we had the, the woman at the well last week. So this, this of course, is the man uh, who got his sight. So I just want to go through it a little bit. I, I found it exciting. Uh, the blind man is healed by the kindness of Jesus. Now, first thing I noted was the man did not ask for it. Okay, he didn't ask for it. I'm thinking he woke up that morning with his highest expectation, maybe somebody had put a coin in his tin cup because he was blind, and what else could a blind person do? So no expectation, he didn't ask for it. Instead, he received something from God uh, greater than he could ever imagine. How many of us have ever had that kind of experience? Maybe our expectations are a little low and God gives us a wow. And so I would say that man, we don't know much about him, uh, started his journey of discovery that day. So uh, he, note, note this, I, I found a progression, in, you know, as Patty was reading there, when the blind man's neighbors asked him who healed him, the first thing he said, the man called Jesus. Well, that's a pretty good statement, okay. Later, when he was brought in front of the Pharisees, his understanding changed to, he is a prophet. So it kind of upped it a little bit. And then even later, when he was pressed by the Pharisees, he said, that Jesus was surely from God. So, you know, going up. And then finally, he said he came to see Jesus as the Son of God, and he worshiped him. So, you know, just seeing in the life of this man, or this little story here, he went from, yeah, I've heard of Jesus, <laughs> and then going on up. And that's maybe some of our life there. And uh, <laughs> uh, so his journey began that day. It was kind of a starting time. Well, there are a few themes that go throughout this, and I'm going to put in a couple here. And, and one is to hold tightly to Jesus and loosely to doctrine. Now, it's kind of a dangerous thing to say, but I know I've seen families, churches, communities uh, torn apart by doctrine. Let's just say baptism, for example. Uh, You've got to go all the way under. You need to be an adult, etc. It's a very valid thing. No uh, in the Bible it says so-and-so was baptized in his whole household. You could, 
I remember as a youngster going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's doctrinal. And yeah, let's disagree on it, but let's not tear up the whole church or the community about doctrine because there's some things that are left a little bit to, you know, uncertainty. So uh, we don't want to cling, uh, we don't want to cling to that. So doctrine, that's beliefs and teachings. Um, and now the one thing about this story, and I'd never thought of it quite this way, and I was listening as Patty was reading, uh, what, what reason did the Pharisees have that the man was blind? They asked, who sinned, this man or his parents? That was their doctrine. He was blind because of sin, his sin or his parents' sin. And then Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sin. So there was a different doctrine there. Uh, back in the day, the Pharisees thought, you sin, you, gotta, you pay a price. You're blind, you get leprosy or whatever it might be. And that's part of the belief that I think we need to cling tightly to Jesus, but loosely to doctrine, because my doctrine has changed a little bit. I would say I've kept basic. Uh, some of my colleagues and others have I think sometimes you can just go beyond with your doctrine and you lose the basics. Uh, but beyond that, I think we, in depth, we, we learn a little bit about, more about our doctrine. So if we cling tightly to Jesus, we will love God and our neighbors and ourselves. Uh, somebody wrote, it's like a beautiful mix of humility and power. So I try to be pretty humble and mainly, as I mentioned last week, because I often say or do things that Bring a, who's Scotty? Now be nice. <laughs> uh, we get humble, don't we? If we're married, we get humbled. You know, we have friends, our kids, as they get older, they humble us. But there's a mix of that and, and power. So if we hold tightly to Jesus, uh, we love God. Um, okay, and then holding tightly to Jesus is, is following the narrow road. So uh, the doctrine in this story, again, was the Pharisees said, sin brought upon his blindness and Jesus said no it, it was not that so it's shocking when you think about it and this this might be I don't, I don't want to compare too much to the world or leaders or politics or whatever but think the Pharisees they were the smart people they were the religious people they were in charge okay notice what they did not do when they saw the man being healed they did not rejoice that the man could see Duh. They, they didn't rejoice. They didn't respond in wonder, saying, wow, we must worship this Jesus. Look what he did. They didn't do that. They didn't joyfully share the story to others. You see what I mean? They were, they were clinging to doctrine, their wrong doctrine. They weren't happy at all. And they didn't stop to think, hmm, maybe this Jesus has something going here. They didn't think about that. They just thought about their position, their power. And I would say, again, if you're talking about world leaders, governments, local, sometimes there's a doctrine, a story, a narrative that's out there. And I think the best thing we can do sometimes is saying, how does, how does what we're hearing follow with the very basics of life? That people need to have freedom of speech, be able to have good food, uh, be able to, to grow crops, be able to have clean water. How does what I'm hearing fit in with their teaching, that narrative? And, and in a sense, we got to cling tightly to Jesus and to the basics and not fall along with the narrative, or in this case, the doctrine. So misguided doctrine. They were full of ideas about Jesus, but they were not clinging to him. I don't quote Gandhi very much. And of course, he, he was not a uh, you know, man of faith in, 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 in the way we would look at it, but he admired the teachings of Jesus. Gandhi particularly liked the Sermon on the Mount. That would be Matthew 5, 6, and 7. But Gandhi said many times, I love the Jesus of the Bible, but I'm not sure about those who follow him. And I think all of us are a little bit guilty of that. We, we see Jesus who loved and cared, and then sometimes we are hypocritical or we hang on to, to false doctrine, etc. cetera. So that, that's, an, that's an important thing. So to hold tightly to Jesus and loosely to doctrine it, is a big thing. And the second thing is that God's love restores us. I think we all need to have restored. So uh, Matthew 9 says, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Back and forth, back and forth. Now that almost seems kind of cruel. He, he'll, you know, good that he brings the 
blind to see, but not so good that he would bring uh, those who see to blindness. But in a sense, Jesus is saying, look, it's like a doctor. The doctor wants to find out what's wrong with us, right? So we go to the doctor, and the doctor gives us a diagnosis. And we, you know, believe the doctor or we don't believe the doctor. We follow the doctor's orders or we don't. But assuming this is a good, honorable doctor, the doctor is trying to give us things that will help us, to heal us. And we follow those. So with Jesus, we hear things that help heal us and, and, and his word. That's so important. I think the Apostle Paul is a good example. When you think about Paul, uh, he was a Pharisee. You know, the Apostle Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, he was a Pharisee. He hung on to doctrine. He did not love Jesus. He persecuted Jesus. It's interesting that God picked Paul to be one of the leaders of the church. And he turned him around so in the end, Paul hung on to Jesus and not to his false doctrine that he had learned as a young child. So I love that story because it showed the, the Pharisees who were the religious ones. And, you know, I'm the preacher here, so I, I worry about these stories because if you're the rabbi or the preacher or whatever, you have to be careful you want to preach good, sound doctrine, but none of us want to be hung up on just what we think about God. To me, this story means it isn't all the knowledge we have. I've, I've known people who have an incredible memory, who know the Bible, what I'd say, inside and out. They can quote scripture day and night, but this may be judgmental, but I see in some people in their lives they're not clinging to Jesus. You know what I mean? Just, it, it, none of us want to be in, in a position of judgment, but I think the bottom line is how are we living our lives? Are we clinging to Jesus? I'm just guessing uh, what Roger heard at this men's conference that there was a lot about that as he talked about integrity and truth, I think you said. And it's not easy to do because we're, we're really scattered out there because we listen to the news, TV, radio, newspapers, and we think that's true, is it? Is it not? For Christians, we need to think about the basics. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I believe that God created the heavens and the earth, and I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we work together to help one another cling to Jesus and not to the things that kind of fall apart. So I'm praying and hoping that this church, which has been here since 1903, Where's my cup? I lost it here. Night, or 2003 was our 100th, right, Leonard? <laughs> and we're up to, you know, we'll have another big one one of these days. But this church has been clinging to Jesus all that time. And that's what I pray for you and for me. Amen.